Not a wallet talk, <laughs> not a lot of geek talk. There's more. You know, there's some geek talk, but but real elegant sort of vibe at the event. Uh, you know, what's your take, Henry? Yeah, I think a great opportunity here at Sapphire to get an opportunity to better sit down with our SAP customers and fundamentally understand the problem they're trying to solve from that. Highly functional, but not fast. And you're hearing a different message today, you know, um, this week from the staff of the SAP executive speed, mobility, you know, simplicity, personalization. Um, it feels like the mental shift is over here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. does. And that's why Bristol Spears should be here. We were able to capitalize on those key value propositions and the messages that they've been advocating by remaining closely aligned with SAP from a technology perspective working very closely with our parents, both uh, collaboratively in the field and with our customers directly, to actually address the SAP customer base as, as one of our greatest successes since we've been formed as a company. So, you know, a couple years ago, after B-Block came out, mm-hmm. we sort of put forth the premise that SAP was a big company. We were going to simplify and speed the company. It's very expensive, as you guys know, to roll out SAP in you know, 100 countries. And there's hundreds of millions of dollars, so it takes a long time. So anything you can do to speed that economy will bring value. Um, at the same time, DJ, the customer dynamic was interesting back then. I'm wondering if, in fact, it's changed. It's sounds good. CIO loves it. But the head of application says, well, I don't really want to virtualize my SAP app. You know, I, I want to have the give me my symmetrics and give me my fast response and sort of leave me alone. Okay, good. Somebody else pay for it. Now, Talk about that a little bit. We certainly encountered some resistance initially to the core value proposition, but I think that the relationship that we've established with SAP and the sensitivity that we've found with respect to their customers has been one of our greatest successes. At the beginning of 2011, we had a handful of SAP customers that had migrated to B-Block. By the end of the year, we had over 25, and now we have close to 60. That's a pretty rapid ramp up of customers that went from the company to B-Block to us to the third quarter. I think one of also the things we've fundamentally done with sitting down with our SAP customers, we've gotten smarter on understanding them so we have a better message to them. And, and one of the first things you got to come to understand is what's the existing state that they're in and what they're dealing with. There's Greenfield rollouts, there are existing customers running on Unix platforms, the x86 customers, and we've gotten a little bit smarter working with VC and EMC together in the full portfolio and meeting those challenges and requirements to those customers, which has helped reduce the risk to those customers to embrace virtualization more quickly. So what else, Henrik, are they telling you? I mean, what are their real pain points? So fundamentally what I'm hearing is help me reduce the cost of the infrastructure, mm-hmm. help me meet and improve SLAs, help me reduce risk, mm-hmm. and uh, help me improve the end user com- uh, experience. And if you look at the portfolio between VC and EMC, 
these are core fundamental areas where we leverage consolidation, virtualization, VDU to reduce costs, right? Improve SLAs by our solutions and our performance improvements, uh, reduce risk by our backup recovery and data protection strategy and our RSA portfolio, and uh, improve an end user experience, all the things we're doing for the customer to fundamentally expect that the customer, uh, the SAP GUI user gets what they want when they want it. I think one of the executives from SAP said it yesterday, when you sit in front of the, uh, talk to a customer, the customer expects that they're the only customer in the world. So that's the experience we want to deliver to the end user uh, of SAP. And on all those attributes that you just talked about, uh, Henrik, and this is a question for you, DJ, the security, the, the deduplication, the backup, um, you know, the management, mm -hmm. is that all encompassed in, in vBlock today for SAP? And, and, and do people want that single SKU, that block of infrastructure? Uh, we, don't think, about that. we don't think that there's any question that this is exactly what they're seeking. That conversion infrastructure platform is pre-tested, pre-validated, pre-integrated, and it's configured for what that SAP customer really likes to migrate to to the best way of the environment. Uh, moreover, what we can do is we can do it rapidly. As opposed to a customer who likes to source individual components themselves, the ability to order and deploy a VBlock in 45 days or less or begin that SAP migration to a fully virtualized environment is a very compelling value proposition. We can do it more rapidly than our competitors and ultimately more efficiently with greater agility. Now, um, I mentioned earlier it's expensive to ins install SAP, so there's obviously a great value at the other end of that. You know, people are spending a lot and they're getting a lot. Um, will they pay a premium in this market for that integration? A, a premium for the pre-testing yes. infrastructure? I mean, uh, value. I mean, will they pay a premium? Uh, we, we believe that they, 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 they can, they do, yeah. and it's worth it. And, and we've been able to actually produce a relatively short return on investment so that that premium is actually something that is, uh, is, is, is well factored into the economics. Yeah, so I think that is an important point because uh, I've talked to other suppliers of converged infrastructure and there's a there's a land grab going on, let's face it, right? Um, and, and you're seeing a lot of you know, pricing, discounting, white glove service, and I think, in a way, customers like that. On the flip side, that makes people nervous. Oh, they're going to lock me in. They're going to jack up prices. So, I think it's the right strategy. If I understand it, your your strategy is to provide that integration, get a premium for it, explain the value to people, and you know, compete. Is that is that fair? Our, our value proposition is actually pretty simple. We have what we believe to be best of breed components: mm -hmm. system storage, system DCS compute, system networking technologies, and data room virtualization. There is no better technology available in any of those categories than any other company in the business. What we do is we actually put more value by virtue of how it's integrated, how it's tested, how it's configured, how it's deployed, and ultimately how it's delivered to our customer. And the focus that we have on seamless support is another key differentiator. A customer deploys a VBlock, they have one phone call, that phone call is the DCE. We have a customer support issue to make sure that they get the answer that they're getting. So we make it simple, we give them an agile solution that optimizes SAP to virtualize the product. Yeah, I mean, we at Wikibon, we studied this. We, we did a report recently on the converged infrastructure market, and we forecast, uh, first of all, the, the market's enormous. Yeah. I mean, it's a about $400 billion marketplace, and, and we forecast that well over half is going to be, I think, more like 60% by 2017. It's going to be some form of converged infrastructure, either as a single SKU or as a, a reference architecture plus, let's call it. Um, now, you must have pressure to, to, to provide choice, right? But it's, you know, v, I've always said VBlock is, you know, any way you want it as long as it's black. And then you, <laughs> you make no apologies about that. And, there's, and, and I've heard Mike Capellas talk about the advantages of that from an industry perspective. But, Henrik, are you, I mean, it's a diverse world out there. Are you hearing from customers, hey, we do want choice in certain cases, and how do you accommodate that? I, I think fundamentally they're asking us, help us reduce risk as they go through uh, those compelling reasons, whether it's an application upgrade or a technology refresh or a virtualization strategy. And if, if the portfolio of technologies with VC and VBlock can help reduce that risk, then they're very open to having those conversations. And then I would also say that you, you map out all the other technologies from EMC that complements the rest of that. So when we can drive innovation, we drive it from a portfolio perspective. And we solve all the things SAP customers are trying to do going from current state to future state. Yeah, so I mean, that's obviously a big concern that CIOs have, is how do I get from point A to point B without ripping and replacing um, and, you know, say, reducing my risk? So talk about the blueprint for that. How do you take them from point A, where they are today, to, you know, the, the vision? Thank you. 
really good to support this great company. So how does that work? Somebody shows interest, and they say, okay, let's start small, and then if it works, we'll, we'll grow from there. Yeah. Sometimes we do things on site. Sometimes we do things in our labs. Uh -huh. Sometimes we do things in conjunction with their ecosystem of partners. It's really customer dependent. However they want to do it. Yeah. So you guys are and, – and so again, like I said, this is, I've observed as a land grab. That's your version of, of land grab. We'll be very flexible. We'll bend over backwards to demonstrate the benefits, and, right. and as opposed to discounting. I think, again, that's the right strategy. I think customers should expect to pay a premium for integration. Why? Because there's value at the other end. Um, now, there is concern about lock-in, and you just got to make sure that you manage that. You know, you, you got to have dual sourcing strategies, and, you know, uh, uh, there, there's there's other ways in which you can, you know, move the data and, and protect yourself. And, and I think longer term, this business is right for that type of converged infrastructure because otherwise you cannot manage the data growth. Are you seeing that? Uh, I was going to say also, you know, some of the customers that we have discussion about doing PLC, many times when we have those discussions with the customer, they actually elect not to do the PLC because they're focusing on the area that they can improve of the infrastructure, the end user experience. So take LVM, for example, landscape virtualization manager. Mm -hmm. Once again, Securities landscape for transition manager and provide those value add areas that they can provide in the integration with ERC and EC. They move forward with, with, with solving those different problems versus you know, doing too many evaluations along the way. How about um, we hear a lot about HANA uh, at this event? I mean, we can't go to a session and not hear about HANA. Um, what are you guys doing with, with things like HANA cert certification and how big is it in, in your customers? these announcements, um, the fundamental things that if, if SAP customers and SAP drives HANA to the next level, there's some fundamental things they got to figure out, such as data protection, failover, high availability, mm -hmm. scale out performance. These are th fundamental things that are core to EMC and VC over the last 20 years that we think we can bring to the HANA yeah, solution. So, so Hendrik, that that's d addresses my next question, which was specifically you heard uh, I don't know if you heard uh, Hageman Snabe this morning yeah. mm -hmm. say, imagine all data is in memory, mm -hmm. and imagine you don't need a traditional disk-based database. Um, now, UEMC, you, you sell <laughs> traditional disk that supports a lot of database activity. So um, that was sort of a backhanded comment at Oracle, yeah. but it also, if you're EMC, you're sitting in the audience going, hmm, okay, well, that well. has implications for us, but you just, I think, mentioned you know, your strategy there. Ta let's add a little color I to that. I think there's an opportunity for us there because if that strategy moves forward, and as it is, there are fundamental things like information management, data protection, failover, high availability. There are core things that SAP customers get today. They are going to expect that going forward with HANA for analytics and BW, and also in the future from an ERP perspective. And that's where I think you're going to see when we come out with a solution, we're going to help accelerate that and solve those fundamental uh, uh, IT and business challenges. Yeah, this is an area that I really want to explore. We're going to be in the MC world next week. Oh, uh, I presume yeah. you guys are going to be yes. there? Yeah. And um, we always get time with Pat Gelsinger. I hope yeah. we do again. And I'm sure we will. Uh, it's really interesting to see what's happening with function, sort of moving back toward the server. You guys just made an acquisition, I think it was last week, or maybe Extreme week before, Extreme IO. Yeah. Um, you know, on, on top of the VF Cash announcement, you guys started it all way back when with enterprise flash drives. and. And, and I think we're seeing very rapid and dramatic shifts in the way that infrastructure and this, the whole storage hierarchy is supporting applications. Um, how much visibility do you get from customers on that shift in terms of, I mean, it's clearly it's happening in the developer community. People yeah. are writing new applications to take advantage, and, and a lot of web giants have done it for a long time, like Facebook, for instance. Are, are the customers that you guys talk to sort of sensitized to the changes that are coming? Are they organizing their own internal application development uh, efforts uh, uh, accordingly? Or is that more, you know, froth within the technology community? What's your sense there? We, we, 
what we've seen is a greater interest in that over the past 12 months than we did during the previous 12 months. I think as the technologies mature, they become more easily deployed, they become more reliable. That sort of endeavor and those sorts of investments will continue. So we're seeing a shift, albeit one that is, I think, more gradual than some others. And I'll contrast that with the HANA shift. The HANA shift is much more complex, much more significant. And that's something that we think is going to be very sustainable and give us all a very significant differentiator. <laughs> The vast majority of our customers are large enterprises. I would say that the Fortune 1000 is a reasonably good proxy for who our target market tends to be on a global basis. It gives our customers an opportunity for choice. We think it augments and complements what we're doing. Our value proposition is significantly different. And frankly, as long as our customers are buying the best storage products in the world, which we believe come from UMC, we think it's great. It's a great illustration not only of how we work collaboratively with our clients, but how we exploit the benefits of working with SAP. And it is going to be, I think, a, just a stellar rollout. I'm very excited about it. 